Prison Audio Production Company presents Love Behind Bars, Navigating Incarceration in Relationships by Sean Robert Johnson. Table of Contents, Chapter 1, The Foundation of Love. Chapter 2, Emotional Resilience. Chapter 3, Overcoming Challenges. Chapter 4, Cultivating Personal Growth. Chapter 5, planning for the future chapter one the foundation of love love in its purest form knows no boundaries it transcends the physical realm weaving hearts together even when separated by the harshest of circumstances this is a truth i have come to understand intimately having spent 17 years of a 60-year sentence at the new jersey state penitentiary in this chapter, we embark on a journey to explore the fundamental principles that underpin a relationship when one person is incarcerated. Understanding incarceration as a life chapter. Incarceration is a chapter in life, not the entirety of it. It is crucial to recognize that it does not define either partner, but rather presents an opportunity for growth, both individually and as a couple. It is a period that demands patience, resilience, and unwavering support. Question. What advice would you have when it comes to being patient for people who are in a relationship where one person is in prison? I would say that you have to just take it one day at a time because it's almost similar to like being in a long distance relationship, right? The only difference is you really have to depend on when the person that's incarcerated calls you and that right there you have to fit around your schedule so it definitely gets frustrating frustrating you can email back and forth you can go to visits but you have to go through a whole process and all that but i think if you are patient and really dedicated to that relationship you will be able to make it work the power of communication communication is the lifeline of any relationship but in the context of incarceration, it takes on an even greater significance. It becomes the bridge that spans the gap between prison walls and the outside world. Letters, phone calls, and even the occasional visit become cherished moments of connection, fostering a bond that defies physical separation. Building trust from a distance. Trust is the cornerstone of any strong relationship, and in the context of incarceration, it must be it must be cultivated with care. Transparency, honesty, and a steadfast commitment to one another become the bedrock upon which trust is built. It is a fragile, precious thing requiring time and effort to nurture. Question, what are some ways you can communicate while in prison? Well, you have the phone system that you can make calls out throughout the day in the prison that we have, you get 10 numbers on your phone list. This is in New Jersey. And you only allow to call each number 10 times, right? You're able to use JPay that we currently have for emailing, pictures, 30-second uh, videos, 30-minute video visits. But So that's our just – and you got handwritten letters as well. You can do it old school. So those are just the ways how you can communicate while in prison. Setting realistic expectations. In the face of incarceration, it is vital to set realistic expectations. This is not a journey for the faint of heart. There will be challenges, moments of doubt, and unforeseen obstacles. However, understanding that these are a part of the process allows for a more grounded, resilient partnership. As we embark on this exploration of love behind bars, remember that while the circumstances may be unconventional, the essence of love remains unchanged. It is a force that defies confinement thriving even the most unlikely of places. In the chapters that follow, we will delve deeper into the intricacies of maintaining a thriving relationship under these circumstances, drawing on personal experience and the wisdom gained along this challenging yet profoundly yet profoundly rewarding path. Chapter two Emotional Resilience In the realm of relationships, emotional resilience is the bedrock upon which enduring love is built. When one person is incarcerated, the challenges to emotional well-being are amplified, demanding a level of fortitude 
that few can comprehend. This chapter delves into the intricacies of nurturing emotional strength and intimacy in the face of separation, coping with separation anxiety. The physical absence of a partner can give rise to profound feelings of separation anxiety. It's essential to acknowledge and address these emotions, allowing them space without letting them overwhelm. Developing coping mechanisms such as journaling, mindfulness practices, mindfulness practices, or seeking professional support can provide solace in moments of distress. Managing loneliness and isolation. Loneliness is a formidable adversary, one that often accompanies the experience of having a loved one behind bars. However, it is crucial to recognize that one is never truly alone. Cultivating a sense of community, both within and outside the prison environment, can offer comfort and camaraderie during moments of solitude. Question, how do you deal with being alone while in prison? It's a hard thing when you don't have that companionship. But when you have that person that you are in a relationship and you are trying to build that foundation and that love, it's something to look forward to every day with every phone call, with every email, every time you go to a visit. And you see that a lot of people that may once be going down a certain path in prison, that once they have that solid partner, they start tightening it up. So that's always a good thing because it helps you change and it helps you grow. So you definitely need to do it. But when you're alone, it's hard. It's definitely hard. Nurturing emotional intimacy. While physical proximity may be absent, emotional intimacy remains within reach. Through open and vulnerable communication, partners can deepen their connection, sharing hopes, dreams, and fears, engaging in activities that foster emotional closeness, such as sharing stories, reading together, or discussing shared interests can bridge the gap between prison walls and the outside world. Balancing independence and togetherness. Maintaining a healthy balance between independence and togetherness is vital in any relationship, and it takes on heightened significance when one partner is incarcerated. Both individuals must have space to grow as individuals will still while still cherishing the moments of unity that sustain that partnership. This delicate equilibrium is a testament to the strength of the bond. Emotional resilience is the cornerstone of any successful relationship, particularly one that navigates the challenges of incarceration. By acknowledging and addressing separation, anxiety, combating loneliness, combating loneliness, Nurturing emotional intimacy and striking a balance between independence and togetherness, couples can cultivate a love that endures, even in the most trying circumstances. In the subsequent chapters, we will explore further strategies and insights to fortify the foundation of the relationship. Chapter 3, Overcoming Challenges Every relationship encounters obstacles, but when one person is incarcerated, Unique challenges arise that require a special kind of tenacity and determination. In this chapter, we will explore strategies for facing and surmounting the hurdles that often accompany a relationship in the shadow of incarceration. Question, what are some unique challenges you face while being incarcerated when it comes to relationship? I think that one of the main challenges, if you have any type of disagreement and it leads into an argument, is like it could go both ways. If you're the person that's on the street, you can't sit there and resolve the argument because you got to wait until the person that's incarcerated either calls you or responds to your messages, right? And if you're the person that's incarcerated, you might call that person on the street, but they might not pick up the phone or might not respond to your email. So I think that's one of the toughest challenges that you face when it comes to relationship. And then it's like going through the visit process. Yeah, your people's got to be there probably an hour, hour and a half before the visits even start. So they got to go through a whole strenuous process on that alone just in order to see you. So you really can't hug and kiss that person or have that physical connection like you want to. And then just being in prison, just the lack of the physical aspect of being able to be around that person, to cuddle with that person, to have 
that give that person a shoulder to, to cry on, to lean on when they cry or going through tough times. So I think those are some of the unique challenges that you face while being incarcerated. Dealing with stigma and judgment. Society can be harsh in its judgment of those connected to the incarcerated. It's imperative to develop a shield of resilience against stigma, recognizing that love is a force that transcends societal norms. Educating oneself about the realities of incarceration and finding supportive communities can be powerful tools in overcoming the weight of judgment. Addressing legal and administrative hurdles. Navigating the legal and administrative aspect of a relationship during incarceration can be overwhelming. From visitation rights to communication restrictions, understanding and advocating for your rights is crucial. Seeking legal advice or connecting with organizations that specialize in supporting couples in similar situations can provide invaluable guidance. Maintaining boundaries and respect. Respect for boundaries is vital in any relationship, and it becomes even more crucial in the context of incarceration. Open communication about individual needs and expectations, as well as respecting the autonomy of each partner, lays a foundation of trust and mutual understanding. Question, what are some boundaries couples should have? I think you should have a boundary in the aspect or sense of Yes, you can embrace what family and friends might have as far as opinion, but don't let them be the deciding factor or the dictation of you being with a person that's incarcerated or you being with the person that's on the street because everybody's going to have their opinions. And sometimes it is the craziest thing to me is that some people don't even have their own relationships good and they try to give you advice in your relationship you got to go around your relationship the best way possible that y'all see fit because it's not a normal situation of one person being on the streets and one person being incarcerated. Managing financial strain. The financial strain of incarceration can be a significant challenge for both parties. Balancing the cost of communication, visitation, and potentially legal fees requires careful planning and budgeting. Exploring available resources such as support networks or assistance programs can provide relief during financial challenging times. Overcoming the challenges inherent in a relationship during incarceration requires a steadfast commitment to each other's well-being and a willingness to confront adversity head-on. By addressing stigma, navigating legal complexities, respecting boundaries, and managing financial strain, couples can build a resilient partnership that stands the test of time. In the following chapters, we will delve deeper into strategies for personal growth and envisioning a future beyond incarceration. Chapter 4, Cultivating Personal Growth. In the crucible of incarceration, personal growth becomes not only a goal but a lifeline. This chapter delves into the the transformative power of self-improvement, offering insights on how both partners can nurture their individual development and support one another on a journey towards a brighter future. Self-improvement and education. Education is a bacon of hope. Illuminating the path towards personal growth and a better future, whether through formal education programs within the prison system or independent learning endeavors, Investing in knowledge and skills empowers individuals to transcend the limitations of their current circumstances. Strengthening mental and emotional well-being. Question, what do you do to stay positive while in prison? You can do a, a number of things while you are in prison and stay positive. Go to church. If, that's, if you are Christian or go to your religious service, whatever your religion may be. If you need further... To, To further your education, go to school. You got different programs that you can sign up for. You got different activities you can do as far as playing basketball, playing handball, playing chess, playing dominoes uh, during recreation times. Or go to the gym. You can work out. That's your thing. Or you can, and you can also surround yourself with positive, motivated minded people that's going to motivate you and put you in the right direction. Stay away from the nonsense and it'll all work out for you. Maintaining mental and emotional well-being is paramount in the face of adversity. 
Engaging in practices like meditation, journaling, or seeking therapy can provide valuable tools for managing stress, anxiety, and depression. Prioritizing self-care and mental health fosters resilience and equips individuals to face challenges with clarity and strength. Fostering independence and ambition. Individual independence and ambition are the cornerstones of personal growth. Encouraging each other to pursue goals, whether they be professional, creative, or personal, bolsters self-esteem and reinforces the belief in one's capacity for positive change. Supporting each other's goals. A supportive partnership is one that uplifts and encourages their pursuit of dreams and aspirations. Actively championing Actively championing each other's goals creates a foundation of mutual respect and a shared vision for a fulfilling future together. Cultivating personal growth within the context of incarceration is a testament to the resilience and determination of individuals in love. By embracing education, prioritizing mental and emotional well-being, fostering independence, and wholeheartedly supporting each other's goals, Couples can embark on a journey of transformation that transcends the confines of prison walls. In the subsequent chapters, we will explore the process, process of envisioning and planning for life together after release. Chapter 5, Planning for the Future. As the journey through incarceration progresses, the horizon of release draws near. This chapter is dedicated to the crucial task of envisioning and planning for a life together beyond the confines of prison walls. It explores the steps necessary to transition from incarceration to reintegration and how to fortify the foundation of your, of your relationship for the challenges and triumphs that lie ahead. Envisioning a life together at the release. The vision of a shared future is a powerful motivator, providing hope and purpose during the darkest hours of separation. Imagining the life you will build together, your home, your routines, your aspirations, creates a blueprint for the days to come. Communication, trust, and shared goals will form the cornerstone of this chapter. Transitioning from incarceration to reintegration. The journey from incarceration to reintegration is a significant milestone, one that requires careful planning and preparation. This may encompass securing housing, employment, and necessary resources. Open communication about expectations and potential challenges is essential, as is seeking out resources and support networks to ease the transition. Question, how do you plan for the future while in prison? literally got to create a vision board, right? You got to sit there and write down everything that you want to accomplish together as a team. Then, being that you have your partner that's on the outside, you got to have your partner start researching the information that you need so that y'all can have the blueprint of everything that you want to accomplish together. Now, everything is not going to go exactly to the T of how you want it to go, right? That's just how life is in general. But don't get discouraged. Long as you stay on that path of everything that you want to accomplish and y'all start putting the effort in to make the moves and make everything happen prior to your release, I think everything else with, in regards to the transition will happen as best as possible. Building a strong support system. A robust support system is invaluable in navigating the complexities of post-incarceration life. This network may include family, friends, mentors, and community organizations. Cultivating relationships with individuals who understand and respect your journey will provide a safety net of encouragement and assistance. Sustaining a loving partnership beyond bars. As you step into this new phase, it is crucial to carry the lessons and strengths gained from your time apart. Maintain the communication skills, trust, and emotional intimacy that sustain you during incarceration. Continue to support each other's growth and aspirations and face challenges as a united front. Your journey marked by the trials of incarceration is a testament to the enduring power of love. 
through every obstacle, you have demonstrated that love knows no boundaries. As you step into this new chapter together, carry with you the knowledge that your bond is strong enough to weather any storm. Embrace the future with hope, courage, and the unwavering belief in your shared love story. You want your support system to be made up of your loved ones, right, that you know that's reliable, that you can count on, they're going to be there for you so that once you get home, they will help you and assist you with everything that's, that you need, right? Because unless you started making things happen while you're currently in prison and you was blessed to have revenue coming in, to already had that stuff set up, a lot of people you have to rely on other people. So having them people that's not going to flake on you and they say, yo, I'm going to do this, and then when you get there, they don't do it, it's always good. So your support system is who you know is reliable, and you know who that is. You know who those people are to you. In the pages of this book, we've embarked on a journey through the complexities of maintaining a relationship when one person is incarcerated. Through every word, every reflection, and every piece of advice, one resounding truth has echoed. Love knows no boundaries. The challenges faced from separation, anxiety, to societal judgments, legal complexities, to financial strains are not unique in their existence. They are shared threads in the fabric of countless relationships, each one a testament to the strength and resilience of those who dare to love beyond the confines of circumstances. As we conclude this exploration, remember this. The foundation you've built, fortified by trust, communication, and unwavering support, is a testament to the enduring power of love. It is a force that transcends prison walls, societal norms, and the weight of judgment. It is a, it is a beacon of hope that illuminates even the darkest moments of isolation. As you step forward, envisioning a life together beyond these bars, carry with you the knowledge that your love has proven itself against all odds. The journey ahead may be uncertain, but it is one you face hand in hand, armed with the tools and wisdom gained along this remarkable path. Embrace the future with hope, courage, and the unshakable belief in your shared love story. For in the end, it is this, it is this love that will guide you through, making the chapters ahead a state, a testament to the enduring power of the human heart, with heartfelt wishes for your continued journey.